Uh, so I am the general manager at Bear Patch Co-op, which is about an hour up into the mountains from here, directly east and slightly north. Uh, we've been around for almost exactly the same amount of time as SAC Co-op has, just about 40, a little over 40 years of history for our co-op. And I'd like to share a little bit about the story. One of the questions I get, you know, we have in the room here the Davis Co-op, the Sacramento Co-op, there's the Placerville Co-op, and we're the Briar Patch Co-op. Where'd the name come from? And it's easy to imagine that, like, up in the foothills, it's a bramble of manzanita and blackberry bushes, which is true, but the actual story is a little bit uh, more, more um, well, a little deeper than that, and speaks to the theme of cooperation among co-ops. Um, how many people here uh, remember the Whole Earth catalog? It was like a hippie, it was like Google before there was Google, or Amazon before there was Amazon. It was a uh, catalog of kind of back to the earth needs. You could get farm implements, uh, survival stuff. Well, and that came from a group of people who evolved out of the Mary Prime in the mid-60s. And they were moving away from the cities after that original movement had died down. And they imagined a new network of businesses, not necessarily co-ops, but just businesses that would cooperate with each other rather than compete. And these could be in any, um, any areas. There were, there were um, auto shops, CPAs, everything, you name it. Um, Harvey Milk's camera shop was part of the original Briar Patch network. Uh, the Good Vibration Sex Shop was original Briar Patch uh, participant. And it was a network of people who thought there was a different way to do business. Up in my area, when a group of Quakers got together to form a organic co-op because they didn't have access to those products in our area, they happened to be aware of the Briar Patch co-op in Menlo Park. And they reached out and said, hey, we're thinking about starting a store. We've been buying stuff together in my garage for a little while, and we'd like to take that to the next level because we know there's a lot of interest up here. And so the managers at the time said, sure, we'll give you some advice. And there was some cooperation and some collaboration, some advice given. And the organization was formed and ultimately successful over the course of the next few decades. And in that time, that old briar patch went away went out of business for a whole uh, variety of reasons. You can't imagine, though, that uh, you know, demand for natural foods subsided in the South Peninsula. That certainly wasn't the case. So something else happened. And I, I pause to wonder, what would have happened as Briar Patch in Grass Valley became successful if, that, if we had turned around and been able to help them and kept, keep them alive? That wasn't the case. But we did form a connection with Sacramento Natural Foods. We did form a connection with Davis and many of the other groups around the western part of the United States. And that was probably, as I imagine it, simply a matter of a general manager or a store manager or a board member or whoever simply, again, picking up the phone and saying, hey, I'm doing this thing. I think you may have done this before. Can we talk about you did it? Advice is given, help is offered, and there's either a success or a failure. And that goes on for a period of time until those people realized there was a need to formalize that at some level. And so that group of people got together and formed what were known as the Regional Cooperative Associations. And those, we were a part of the Pacific Association. There was also the Northwest, the Southwest, and these sort of things happened naturally and organically across the country. And about 15 years ago, that took the next step. Those groups of people who are meeting regularly and talking about their co-ops, their operations, their struggles, their successes, realized, hey, we're all doing this in a semi-formal way. What if we take the next step and we create a larger organization? And that's what led to the birth of NCG. Change, evolution. In our co-ops, I've heard it a couple times in the room already, Change is sometimes not something that's welcome. We sometimes resist it. We sometimes fear it. Sometimes are just, just, just question it. But it's, always, but it's always present. When we encounter that type of resistance to the change that 
we're seeing maybe 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 a, a bold leader is thinking about bringing to the co-op, it brings up a lot of feelings. It brings up a sense of loss. It brings up a sense of grief, fear. What are we going to lose? I like it the way it is. I don't want it to change. What we need to be driven by, in my opinion, is we need to acknowledge that. There's no question. But we really need to think about what do we gain? Okay, are we afraid of losing something? Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about what we're afraid of losing and talk about how we preserve that in the next iteration of our organization. We talked at the table earlier about um, the challenges that SAC Co-op and many of the other co-ops have faced in changing the uh, discount structure. And uh, one of the staff members brought up the important point that in some cases, yeah, people just simply wanted the discount, and that's, that's, that's the loss that they're suffering. But in other cases, it's actually the fact that, well, I'm a senior. I go to the co-op on senior day, and I see all my other senior friends, and it's part of the community that I built. Well, that's different. Let's talk about how we preserve that. Let's talk about how not only do we preserve that, we grow it. So rather than what we're losing, what we're grieving, we focus on what we have the opportunity to keep, grow, nurture, and ultimately share.